The AMD FX series made its debut on the 12th of October 2011. The series featured four processors, the FX4100, the 6100, the 8120 and finally the FX8150. This launch marked the beginning of AMD's FX lineup, which was built on the initial architecture known as Bulldozer, codenamed Zambezi. Following the Bulldozer architecture, AMD introduced the Pile Driver line of FX processors, codenamed Vashira. These CPUs served as a refresh of the original Bulldozer lineup and were launched on October 23, 2012. The initial Pile Driver lineup introduced the FX 4300, 6300, 8320, and the flagship FX 8350. Additional Pile Driver based CPUs were released in 2013 and 2014, but this was the core lineup. It's important to note that all FX series CPUs were marketed with misleading core counts. AMD advertised the FX 4000 series as having 4 cores, the FX 6000 series as having 6 cores, and the FX 8000 series as 8 cores. The reason for this discrepancy lies in their module architecture, where each module contained two integer cores that shared certain resources such as floating point units and cache. This design allowed AMD to promote these processors as having more cores than traditional architectures, which typically feature fully fledged independent cores with their own resources. In essence, you could think of the modules as the cores and the individual cores within the modules as threads. However, this isn't always accurate as performance can vary depending on the tasks being executed. Ultimately, AMD ended up facing a $12 million lawsuit for misrepresenting these core counts. Now that we've got that covered, let me introduce you to my AMD FX 8350, which I purchased in 2014 and used in my main rig for several years. So here are the build specifications. Before we dive into the benchmarks, it's worth noting that obviously in this case the AMD FX 8350 is recognized as a 4 core and 8 thread processor in Windows 11. This is obviously after AMD's legal issues regarding the core counts. So it boosts a base clock of 4 GHz and a boost clock of 4.2 GHz. I typically didn't push the CPU beyond 4.5 GHz when overclocking it and that was on an all core overclock. Currently it's running at 4.5 GHz with a set multiplier of 22 and a Northbridge clock of 205 MHz. With that said, let's take a look at the benchmarks. So I just wanted to step in here quickly. I wrote task marks, so I'm very familiar in how this all core CPU benchmark works. It uses integers. It's, it's got nothing to do with floating point numbers. So here you can clearly see when the AMD FX 8350 gets utilized, where it can take advantage of its architecture, it definitely stands out. The fact is that it scored higher than the Intel i7 4790 that only came out like a year after the 8350. It's quite impressive. So here's a prime example of where the FX lineup can actually be utilized and does pretty well under the right circumstances. This benchmark tests how CPUs handle low resource tasks across all cores. Intel tends to increase clock speeds more for these tasks while AMD does not. Older Intel processors perceive these tasks as more intensive, leading to higher clock speeds. The benchmark also triggers context switching, which I'll explain on another video.
So what do I think of the FX8350? Well, I'll tell you now, I wouldn't buy one today. I personally think they are a bit of a hit or miss depending on like, what you're using them for. Even if you're possibly using them now, I wouldn't complain. You can still play most games with playable frame rates. I wouldn't try to pair it with a modern GPU. I mean, you could see that the 3060 Ti was being bottlenecked like crazy. But I mean, if you pair it with something like a GTX 1060 or something like that, it, sh it should be pretty well balanced. Um, I originally paired it with an R9 380X at the time, but I mean, you can't even get drivers for that. It's a four gig card, you know. So I did actually test it with the GTX 1060 and, and it was well balanced, I have to say. Overclocking these effects CPUs, well, that was never an issue for me. Not now, uh, not back then. Not that I'm a serious overclocker, but I'm just saying, for the bit of overclock that I did do with these CPUs, as I say, never had an issue. I never would push it beyond 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz, anything over that, it would just get super power hungry. And I was never worried about CPU temps, to be honest, because I never used to see them, even at full load, go beyond like 65, 70 degrees. I was always worried about the VRMs on the motherboards, because I, I always used to cheap out on motherboards. So that was my main concern. But did this CPU age well and be as future-proof as AMD said it would? Not quite, but I think it did okay. Just okay. Oh my god! Oh.